How's it going? I'm Michael and this is Budget Bills. My dad and I bring rusty, crusty old cars back to life. What's happening, Budget Builders? And welcome back to the channel. So sometime around September, I was digging around the internet and got on proxy bid. I saw a bunch of junk at an auction and I bought this for, what did we pay, $150. And after fees, it was like 170. But this is actually a built in 79, first year 1980 bullnose ex-fireman's truck. You see the lights back here, maybe. I don't know how the lighting is. You see the lights back here flashing behind me. This is actually a four by four inline six, 300, four speed granny. Uh, pretty cool old rig. The property that it was on, from what I've been told by the auction company, has actually been sitting vacant for 29 years. And so they had drug this thing out from where we are about to go pull it out of. So we got it home, we have so much other stuff going on, we didn't get time to mess with it, but we did try to turn the motor over and it went kind of like this. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> we'll give this a try. <laughs> so let's go ahead now, start digging into this thing and seeing if we can get it going. All right, so even though this thing's been sitting here for a few months and we did try to drag it around, and actually ripped the bumper off with it in four-wheel drive and, and dragging all four tires. This thing is stuck, stuck, stuck. And so the only way I think we can get it running, well, we could probably keep trying, but I think we need to go ahead and pull that head off. Let's get that one cylinder freed up, slap it all back together, and this thing will run. And so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and pull our carburetor off. We're gonna take all our bolts out for our intake and exhaust, let it swing over to the side, pull our valve cover, all our head bolts, and this thing should pop right on off of there. And we'll see what we're working with. Intake and exhaust are hanging to the side here. And you can see she's a little grimy, but really not bad. And so now it's just a matter of pulling our head bolts and we'll just go ahead and pull everything out of there. I'm not gonna worry about loosening any of these. They'll come on up as we do that. And we may do a little bit of cleaning work on the head. And when we do that, we'll loosen all our rockers. And we'll have to adjust it when we put everything back together. But let's go and get that thing pulled off. Pretty clean, pretty clean, pretty clean. Really, a probably a fairly low mileage engine for a 300. According to the mileage on the truck, 150,000-ish, and that's probably about right. But obviously this one got nasty, and this is all just rust that the Marvel Mistral has soaked into. So what we need to go ahead and start doing 
is trying to get this crap cleaned up and then we can see if we can get the cylinder free. <coughs> and this whole motor should turn over nicely. All right, so the first thing I wanna try is I did see a video on using vinegar to lift some of that rust. You know, obviously there's a lot of work we're gonna to have to do there, but if I can start getting some of those layers, I mean, it's so stinking thick of rust and crust worked out of there. You know, the biggest thing we wanna do is, is we wanna get the engine free, but at the same time, I don't want any of this rust to break our rings or anything off and uh, potentially destroy what engine is there. And so let's go ahead, I'm gonna pour some vinegar in there. We're gonna go ahead and let it start sitting and see how it works. You can see it just to begin with actually starting to bubble a little bit on the walls of the cylinder. So I'm excited to see what this actually does in there. All right, so no doubt she is still an extremely crispy critter. So first thing we want to go ahead and do is get some of this top rust knocked off. And the way we did that is we grabbed the cylinder hone. It's a nice short one. So we should be able to get the top side. And I just want to be able to work down where we can get this rust cleaned out from above that cylinder to try to get this thing broke free. And once we get it broke free, get it all the way down, we can continue cleaning that cylinder up and I think we'll be good to go. Get that vinegar out of there. I'm gonna soak it with the big shot of the PB Bloster. Oh, yummy. Let's get this thing working, man. Put on your drill. Good old fancy drill. Yeah, I don't know where I can find it. Huh? It'll work. Beautiful. Oh, Ooh, that's rusty. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Let's do some wiping up and then keep moving ish. Might as well throw a turbo on this thing because it's going to have some low compression. What you think? <laughs> <laughs> Yum. All right, so we want to give this piston a couple nice taparoonies as we pull down on the crank bolt. And so we have this specific piston bumping tool. And you can specifically buy these from any of your local hardware stores. And that should be what we need. Yep, go ahead. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Beautiful! All in the right tooling. High five. Yeah! <laughs> On the right tooling. You are darn straight about that. Heck yeah, brother. Look at that. All right, so we do have the piston all the way down. And he's just trying to get that thing cleaned up. All right, now I'm just gonna pour some of this hydraulic oil down in here. For some good lubrication. Maybe it's not made for reverse. Yeah, it did it, it did it both ways. That's a good one. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, so we've got that cylinder looking absolutely excellent. Enough to potentially run. So it's got some, uh, you know, these are oil ports for lubrication on the side. You know, they hold your oil in there on the side. But it moves freely-ish, and it'll run. And that's as good as it's gonna get. They're actually, if you notice, a 30 on top of the piston. So this engine's actually already been bored 30 over. I think it'll run if we decide to build it. Maybe we can go a little bit more, find a replacement block, but I think it'll do for now. It'll actually be a testament to those 300s as locked down as it was and as crispy as it still is. We're gonna get our head cleaned up. We'll get it slapped on, torqued down, and get ready to make a run. Good enough. Okay. Beautiful. All right. Let's get it all wiped down. No. What? It wasn't recording. Let me do that one more time. It wasn't recording. Did I record anything? Okay. So apparently I missed the part where we stuck the head on. And when we did that, <laughs> We just stuck our push rods in, got them lined up, set the head down and snug the bolts up. Now that we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and throw our ratchet on the crank. We'll spin the engine over, verify our rotating assembly is working as it should, and none of our push rods got jacked sideways or anything. And then we can go ahead and torque our head bolts. All right, just verify please those, all the push rods. Looks good. Beautiful. All right, so this will probably be the first time you guys will see me not use my handy dandy torque wrench. And that's just because this is a three step process on this and it's a really high torque, uh, 85 torque rooney So here we got our handy dandy torque wrench. Yep, this is an old school one just because I don't have any new calibrated ones. This one's always calibrated, right? So we're gonna start from the middle and work our way out either way. We go in 55, 65, and then 80. And the reason you want to do that nice and even is we are actually torquing down those crush rings around each of those cylinders. And you want to be, be sure it crimps down and seats nice and even. And you can see we just barely have those snug. Pain in the butt. <laughs> I need a torque wrench. That's 60. Good enough, right? go through and recheck them one more time no I'm not they're perf perfect I've already tacked on our valve cover gasket So I went ahead and dropped the oil out of this thing, pulled that filter, 
And thankfully, the oil actually looks exceptionally nice. You can tell that is an old FL1A motorcraft filter. So we went ahead and stuck a new one on there, got her sealed back up. We can go ahead and put some new oil in it now. And I went ahead and splurged on this one. I just figured it would be good to have some extra cylinder lubrication for that one lovely one. Oh wow, this thing's like molasses this morning. Oh, bleh. All right, before I put the, uh, bleh, the carburetor back on or anything, I would like to go ahead and turn this thing over a little bit, see if we can build some oil pressure, make sure everything sounds all right. So it was missing the starter solenoid. We added one of those, hooked up our wire that came off of the starter to here. We put new terminal on the ground wire because it didn't have anything. And then this was off of the car that we borrowed the solenoid off of. And it's a car that's over there. <laughs> when you pour like me, you just kind of got to use stuff off of other stuff that's already running. But hey, that's what you got to do. So got that stuck on here. We do have our signal wire you hook up here. This one does not have an ignition wire. One of these, no, this is something of some light, some of the fire fire station lights or whatever, rescue lights. And then this is your main power that you hook up along with your 12 volt on or 12 volt. I think that's it here. So let's go ahead. I've got our dead battery in there, but we've got a charger on it and we'll try to turn this thing over. Here's our key. Probably need to clean some of this Get stuff out of here. <laughs> Here's our key. Oh, you can see I just removed that ignition switch so we could turn the steering wheel and we can just stick a new one right in there. I didn't tear anything up. So we don't have any, don't have any anything. Oh, we need to fasten our seatbelts. sounds beautiful my first guess is either going to be cables which the ground looks really good the positive looks pretty nice other than right at the starter down there so what i'm going to go ahead and do check and verify we have voltage coming to this side i'll get the boss out here to turn the key and we'll check our voltage coming to here and make sure we're not losing it anywhere really quick. And then if we know that it's getting down, and I'll check at the starter as well. And as long as we know that it's getting down to the starter, then it's probably going to be a starter issue. Okay. And then you just stick it in the ignition and crank it over. That doesn't sound safe. It is. All right. Uh, go ahead and try to turn the key. You turning it? Yeah. Let off? All right, go ahead. Nothing? Nothing. Okay. Looks like our ground is no bueno. All right. So in checking that, we have good voltage when we are grounded out to here. But when we're grounded out to the engine, we don't have very good voltage. So that tells me we either have a bad cable, which I doubt the cable's bad. Oh, I my finger in the way. Or down here on the starter, back there, I don't know if you can see it. There's a ground that we need to probably pull off and clean up the connection and everything. And I think that'll get us going. All right, with all our connections cleaned up, let's see if we get some spinny action. All right, we're well, turning over nicely. I pulled our wire off of our coil right here and I've got it run to a spark plug. Let's go ahead, turn it over and see if we get any fire from the coil, which tells us that our ignition system is good which I noticed this and you'll see she's a little oozy, but I've seen a lot of these like that and they still fire and run pretty good. So let's see what it'll do. And then once we check that, we'll clean our cap up a little bit cause it's kind of crusty and just see if we can get fired all the spark plugs and it'll be a matter of getting fuel to it. So if you guys will watch this for me, see if we get some fire. Firing like crazy, nice. All right, let me pull that cap off. Let's clean it up really quick. Oh, I got some reflections going on here. That looks really good in there. Okay. You see, whoop, 
that cap's not terrible, but our upper connections are kind of crispy. So I want to pull all the wires off one by one. Let's clean them up, get them wire brushed, and get some dielectric grease on them. Let's slap them back on there. All right. Oh, that's actually really clean. Not going to worry about that one. Only ones that are crispy, crispy. Just coat those down nice good. Some dielectric grease. The one that's going to be real bad is the coil wire. I'm just taking this scotch bright. Oh yeah, get it nice and clean. All right, so we got some new sparker fires here. I have gone ahead, these are just some El Cheapos, but I have gone ahead and verified that all the gaps are about 46,000. That's what you want to run on this engine from what I have researched. But also if any of these boxes ever got dropped or anything, you want to verify your gap's not closed off because you will have a dead cylinder. Although, this one's probably gonna have a dead cylinder anyways, but you know, whatever. <laughs> All right, so now it is time to go ahead and stick our carburetor back on. You can see I went ahead and cleaned it up a bit and gave it a good rebuild. Here's our nice gas kit. It's okay, that's what that's for. And I wanted to get away from this smog junk. Now this is obviously gonna be an off-road only vehicle and most of that smog stuff has already been taken off of this engine. So it's not a huge deal. And it just gets away from all these extra vacuum lines and stuff. As you can see, I went and capped everything off there. To do away with this, we've got this professionally manufactured plate that goes in place of it there. And you'll put our bottom gasket down. I went ahead, instead of using those long studs, we now have these little bolts. We'll go ahead and stick everything up on there, get it tightened down, and we can see if this thing is going to run. And there you have it. I did have to do a little trimming here and here. Make sure everything operated as it should. Now we'll go ahead and just get it slapped on there, snugged up, and start turning her over. All right, got our carburetor on. Went ahead and stuck a little coolant back in it. Got our fuel line run to our fuel pump up and through to a filter. I'm a little short on the fuel line. I always am, but let's give it a try. All righty. Hello. I don't know why, but for some reason, this is no longer working. Oh, and it's getting windy and cold. I'll figure that out at another time. For now, let's try to crank it. Uh, let's get some fuel to it. Don't you love a 300? Come on, baby. <laughs> She's got a little knot. Check oil pressure. Pretty good oil pressure. That one cylinder's a little ooey though. Holy rust! <laughs> that sounds about like a 300. There you go. She might be done for the day. It ran. <laughs> From lockdown solid, super crusty. I'll give it to it. It started a lot easier than I thought it would. I love these 300s. Now, obviously the electronic ignition on this one makes a huge difference as far as getting that initial start and everything. If we had points of condenser to deal with, I think it would have been a little different. But with it firing like it needed to and, and everything where it needed to be, there she is. Get, get her freed up and she wants to go. All right, so this morning I went ahead, got the alternator hooked up so we could run it longer. We got the choo-choo train going. <laughs> You see, I did pull the cap off right here and it kind of went everywhere. I think a lot of that is actually, well, that's just blow by from that beautiful cylinder. 
But a lot of that is there was some moisture in that oil. You know, that first little bit of the oil we drained had just a little bit of water. And so it's just boiling all that out. She's clean back here. You just got your little bit of, from it being cold, but. Actually smells pretty good. I don't smell any cool or anything. Purring like a little kitten. We're about ready to run this thing. I love all the, all the rust. All right, y'all. It sounds just like every 300 we've had, or every inline six Ford that we've had. It runs and it actually runs really well. It's not blowing a bunch of smoke or anything, a bunch of rust. <laughs> but that is gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys are as excited as I am to hear the whole 300 run after 29 plus years. I am so stinking excited to get this thing going. Starting the next video, we'll get the truck wrapped up, cleaned up, get the brakes working, and then we're gonna take it out and put it through the paces and see how she does. Straight out of hibernation, long hibernation. <laughs> but I will see y'all in the next few days. Something new that I'm gonna start doing is I'm moving a little bit better with things. We had some rough patches here the past couple months with a few things that have been going on, but we're moving really good now. Every Sunday, I'm gonna start posting a post schedule and you guys will see what we'll be posting throughout the week. We're going to shoot for two to three videos a week now. I'm getting some help here that's going to help me out with a few things and really keep stuff moving and getting as much content out as we possibly can for you all. Get the rash, the rasha, the Porsche wrapped up. Get a couple other projects that we have going on. The ECU is about to be here for the rabbit. We've been waiting on it. It's taken a little bit with the Christmas shipping and everything and everything running so slow but it should be here in the next couple days. I'm gonna get that thrown in the truck. We'll have that thing running and we'll get it dialed in and buttoned up. And it's, I think you guys are gonna be excited. It's, I know I'm really excited. I'm gonna have a, a lot of fun with it. And I hope you all will too going along with this. But we do have a lot coming up that I think you all will really enjoy. Peace out, catch you on the flip side.